Happy New Year's to everyone out there, 2023. So listen, I was trying to upload this video. Uh, it's still an uploading process. It won't upload. And I think for two reasons, the devil did not want this word to go out. And also God wanted me to refine the word. And and uh, sometimes God will give us stuff and sometimes we're too quick to try to teach on it or preach on it and God wants us to kind of refine it a little bit more before we give the word out so that's what I did over the past 24 hours um, but listen a lot going on in your life a lot going on in my life a lot going on in everybody's life and I was just you know thinking back over some stuff that has happened to me since birth um, I have a twin sister, okay, and I have a different birthday than my twin sister because my birth was delayed by over 30 minutes, so it put me after mid midnight, so I have a different birthday. Uh, crazy s scenario there, but as I continually think back at things that has happened to me, things that's been delayed, denied, held back, and um, it... You know, I've really been praying about this stuff. I'm like, God, God, why is this stuff always happening to me? Why is it just doesn't make sense? I don't understand it. And, you know, nobody's perfect. But, you know, I've been taking inventory of my life, making sure that I'm doing the right thing and trying to live a life that's pleasing to God. And still things are being delayed and held back. And I was kind of, you know, just thinking about some stuff. And I heard God say these words to me. He said, you're going to have to command and demand your blessing to be released from the hands of the angels. Now, a lot of what I'm about to talk about is going to be probably a little much or a little deep for a lot of people. Uh, because there is a lot, we don't do a lot of teaching about angels and, and the power, the position that we have. And so uh, I don't want to go too far into the to the angelic topic, but I am going to touch on some things that I think will be helpful. But anyway, as God is telling me this, you're going to have to command and demand your blessing to be released from the hands of the angels. And so that's what I'm believing for. That was a word for me in this year, 2020, 20, in the year 2023, to make some bolder prayers, okay? To make some stronger prayers, to make some bolder requests, to be stronger in the Lord. Because a lot of what we're, a lot of things that I, that have happened to me, not all of them, but some of the things I have allowed to happen because I did not take a strong stance. I did not stand up for my rights. I did not hold people accountable because I, I was, you know, trying to be the nice guy or I was trying to be, um, you know, look out for them instead of Stay, taking the proper strong stance and saying, hey, this is not okay. I'm not going to allow you to do this. And so God was just kind of talking to me about this. And I'm I'm at work while God is speaking to me. And uh, God always confirms his word. And so as God has given me all this, I'm kind of questioning, okay, is this really from God? Is this is this really something that is biblical or something that I can really do when it comes to commanding angels and, and whatnot? And so these uh, two customers happened to walk by me. They were young, two young men. And one of them looked down at my shoes and said, nice shoes or cool shoes, man. And I was like, thank you. Appreciate it. So I kept doing what I was doing and uh, they walk about five feet from me and they're looking at scarves and gloves because it's cold out here. They get ready to go see the Kansas City Chiefs game. Um, and so the one guy just kept observing me and looking at me, not in an awkward, weird way, but he looks at me and then he says, 
boy, it looks like you can preach. And I was like, huh, excuse me? Like, I knew I heard what he said, but I, I didn't, couldn't believe that someone would just say that out the blue randomly to me, especially the way I was dressed. I wasn't dressed like your typical uh, minister or preacher, how people think ministers should dress. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people find it hard to believe that I am a minister, that I do minister and preach and whatnot. Uh, because of the way I dress, you know, I wear earrings and I wear a lot of bling jewelry. So they like, oh, he ain't a preacher. He look like a pimp. You know, I hear that crazy stuff all the time. But anyway, this young man says, it looks like you can preach. And I was like, excuse me? He said, I said, it looks like you can preach. And I was like, oh, yeah, I said, actually, I, a little, I do a little. And uh, he was like, yeah. And so he just kind of kept staring at me and then he he went back to, you know, waiting for his friend to grab the gloves or whatnot. And then he looked back over. He said, man, he said, you're you're just glowing over there. You just got the fire of God all over you. And I was like, I said, wow. I said, uh, thank you. Thank you. I said, are you a believer? I'm, you're a believer, right? And he was like, yeah. And I said, uh, you go to church? And he didn't answer yes or no. He just tapped his heart like this. And then uh, he went on about his way. And so the Bible says, be careful when you entertain strangers because some have entertained angels unaware. And so I, I don't know if this was an angel or not, but I do know it was a confirmation uh, for that current word that God was giving me to share it with you in the year, for the year 2023. And so uh, we we as Christians talk a lot about um, binding the enemy and binding the devil and commanding demon spirits out of people. We have that authority not just over demonic spirits. We have that authority over all spirits. That includes human spirits and even angelic spirits. Yes, angelic spirits. Once again, disclaimer, I know some of you might not agree with that, but I'm going to give you some scripture. I, I'm not going to give you all of it because there's just so much in here, but I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible. Uh, so here we go, man. Um, let's start off with the New Testament. Uh, Matthew, I think it's in Matthew here. Matthew 16, 19. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus, God, has given us his authority, right? He's given us the keys to bind things on earth and in heaven. So I'm going to read that to you again. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. When you have the keys to your house, everything in that house is under your control, under your authority. Everything in that house. So we have the keys to heaven to bind and loose some things. That includes angels. Paul said in his teachings, know you not that we shall judge angels, right? Um, what else we have here? Luke 10, 17. And the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us. Now, keep in mind, before uh, devils became devils, they were fallen. They were angels. So de demons, devils are fallen angels. Lucifer is a fallen angel. We don't just have authority over them because they are demons. Now, we, we have authority over them because we are the heirs of Christ. We are co-heirs with Christ. Right? That's why we have authority over them. But the disciples come to Jesus excited because they said, man, even the demons are subject unto us. 
And then as you read on to the verse, Jesus said, don't rejoice just because the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So that word change was deliberate. It wasn't by accident. Jesus was letting the disciples know that it's not just demons that are subject unto you. It is spirits, all spirits, demonic spirits, angelic spirits, human spirits, whatever the spirit that's out there, it is subject unto you in Jesus name, right? Um, and so I, I begin to think about this. And so I begin to, to, to speak to my angel. I begin to speak to the host of angels about things that has been held up, delayed and denied. Um, you look at Daniel, where the, the angel came to, uh, to Daniel and said, I came for thy words. That's what he says. He said, I came for thy words. He said, at the time you committed yourself to God and chastened yourself before God, I came for thy words, but the prince of Persia hindered me. The prince of Persia delayed me. And so as Christians, we spend a lot of our time only using one part of our power by just focusing everything on the devil and just commanding the devil and trying to bind the devil. But we never command angels to go into action, to move forward. We never, we never use that part of, the, of our authority. And that's a part that I've been missing. And I'm pretty sure that's a part that you as a believer have been missing as well. So I um, hope this helps you. A lot of the times, most of the time, we as Christians, when we talk about being more like Christ, we are thinking about when we make that statement, oh, be help me to be Christ-like. Oh, yeah, that's not Christ-like. I want to usually when people say that, it's because um, they feel like that you're not behaving in the in the weak uh, way that they believe a Christian should be. Right? When we say, "Oh, I need to be more like Christ." I would bet you a hundred bucks that in your mind, you're thinking of things like turn the other cheek, um, be humble, you know, uh, we're thinking about the, the Jesus that was crucified and he took the punishment, he took the beating, he took uh, the whipping, you know, he was bruised, he was spit upon, you know, we're thinking about that side of Christ, that crucifixion, pre-crucifixion of Christ, where Jesus laid himself down to, as a sheep to take the, the punishment, to take the scolding, to take the, the spitting and the beating. That's what we only think about when we say, I need to be more like Christ. But that was Jesus coming to lay down his life. That was not the entirety of Christ's makeup. All the, most of the movies and paintings and, and things that we see of Jesus always depicts this broken, bruised, weak, almost looking, weak looking man, uh, powerless looking man, you know? And we have taken hold of that. And God wants me and you to be cautious of that, right? Because the Jesus that we perceive is the Jesus that we receive, right? So if you perceive a weak, broken, bruised Jesus, but you don't perceive the post-crucifixion Jesus, all power in heaven and earth and the keys of death and the keys of hell and and he has all this power, this might. If you don't perceive that Jesus, then how can you expect that to be manifested in your life? You know, and even as Jesus walked the earth, there's plenty of scriptures I can give you. You know, one of them, Jesus flipped over the tables 
inside the church and there's language that Jesus used where he would call people fox and fools and all these, there's several different uh, scriptures where Jesus wasn't always this person who just let people treat him and talk to him any type of way, right? But especially after the crucifixion, we are now uh, identified as the Lion of Judah, Jesus, right? Because he's no longer the Lamb. He's coming back as the Lion of Judah. But the Jesus that you perceive is the Jesus that you receive, right? So if you have a weak Jesus in mind, maybe that's why there's been weakness manifested in your life. Um, in Corinthians, it talks about... Um, taking communion and, and people, Paul was talking to the church about having divisions among themselves and that when they take communion and when they take it unworthily, they bring on the sickness, the disease, the infirmities that Jesus took upon himself. You know, when we take our communion, we are supposed to take that in remembrance of Jesus. So, we don't have to go through that. But he, but Paul was saying that if you take communion in an unworthy manner, you bring the sickness, disease upon yourself because you have not properly discerned the body of Christ. You have not, if you don't properly discern the body of Christ, you bring sickness, weakness, and death upon yourself. So let us properly discern the body of Christ not just in this narrow way of thinking that we have made Jesus out to be this weak person. So in this year, 2023, there's, I really feel like in my spirit, there's going to be a lot of spiritual, angelic, and even demonic stuff that's been happening that's even going to continue to happen. I really feel like that the gates of heaven is open, but also the gates of hell is open. And you as a believer need to know your position of authority in the spirit, in the flesh, in this body, in the kingdom, the power that God has given you. So stay with, stay with me. I got more to give. Um, let's go to Genesis 32. So we have the story of Jacob, okay? Jacob is serving this man called Laban. And he, he, Laban promised to give him his daughter for his wife if he worked for him seven years. So Jacob does the seven years. Laban gives him another, his other daughter, not the one that he had promised him. So Jacob has to work for him another seven years. I'm not going to go through the whole story. At some point, Jacob says, hey, Laban, I can see, is looking at me differently. He's starting to be jealous of how God is blessing me. You know, I'm gaining more livestock, more cattle than, than him. And, and Laban is becoming jealous of Jacob. So Jacob decides to leave and go back to be closer to his family and his kindred. So we're going to start off on Genesis 32. It says, and Jacob went on his way. And the angels of God met him. I'm going to read that again. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. Host translates into army, camp. This is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. Mahanaim means two camps. It means double cap. That's what it, the word means. So Jacob physically sees the angels of God, not, not just a singular angel, but a whole host of angels. So Jacob has his people, his camp, and then he sees the camp of angels that are with him, right? So Jacob goes on and uh, he's telling his, his, and I'm not going to read the whole scripture. I want you to go and read it. But he's telling his people what to do because he knows that he kind of tricked he tricked Esau out of his blessing. And now he's going back and he's going to run into Esau. And so he's already preparing all these gifts because 
That's his enemy, right? Esau is my enemy. He's going to kill me. He's coming after me. I need to try to smooth this over. Now, keep in mind, he's literally camping with a host of angels. But he's in fear of the enemy that's coming for him that he thinks is going to destroy him. So rather than take the stance of, hey, you know what? Esau can't touch me. Esau can't do a thing to me. I got a whole host of angels with me. He's in fear of the enemy. So rather than go to war with the enemy, he wants to make peace with the enemy and says, oh, give Esau this. And if Esau asks, who are these? Tell him that it's your servants, Jacob's, they are a gift to you and so forth. And so he's, he's given all these instructions, right? And then uh, his servants go to meet Esau and then they return to tell Jacob and say, Jacob is coming for you. With 400 men, he, he's coming out to meet you. And then we go over to uh, Genesis 32, verse 6. And the messengers returned to Jacob saying, we came to thy brother Esau and also he cometh to meet thee. He's coming for you. And 400 men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed and divided the people that was with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two bands. So here he is afraid and scared. And then he starts praying. He's, he prays to God in verse 11. It says, deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother and from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. And he said to God, and God, thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the seed of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So, He's reminding God, God, you said you would bless me. And now my brother's coming to kill me. He's praying out of fear when he's literally encamped with the host of angels. Right? Praying out of fear. He doesn't take his authority. He doesn't know that he has the power to command these angels. He doesn't know that he has power over these angels. So when we don't know the power that we have, we live in a place of fear. God doesn't want that to happen. So listen to uh, verse, as we go down to the same chapter, verse 24, it says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, this is the angel. When the angel saw that he prevailed not against Jacob, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. And he wrestled with him and said, let me go for the day breaketh." And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Now, keep in mind, God has already blessed Jacob. Jacob is already blessed. So you might be watching this video saying, well, COP, well, Isaac, man, you blessed, man. You got a beautiful home. You got a beautiful wife and two beautiful daughters. You know, there's a lot of different things I can point to and say, yeah, I'm blessed just like Jacob could. But Jacob knows there was a greater blessing. There was more to it. But also Jacob was in fear of the blessing because how he came about the blessing. So he was like, man, I, I want a blessing that I can't lose. I want a blessing that no one can take. And so he is wrestling with this angel. A wrestling for your blessing in 2023. And so he says, uh, let me go for the day breaketh. And I will not, and Jacob says, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And the angel said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast power with God, with man, and you have prevailed. For as a prince, thou hast power with God and with man, and thou hast prevailed. Powerful scripture. I like the way the book of Jose breaks it down. Um, 
referring to this passage in Genesis 32. In the book of O.C., chapter 12, it says, He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. God has given you power, not only over demons, but over the angelic realm, over spirits, over everything. Whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. God has given you the keys to the kingdom. Don't be afraid to use your power. Don't let the devil take your strength. Don't let the devil rob you of your authority, right? Because if you are not aware of your authority, you will never use your authority. And if you never use your authority, you will never see a manifestation of power, right? Power is simply the reaction to the action of authority. Power is simply the reaction to the action of authority. So take authority and you will see power. You will see things break loose. You will see things um, free up. You will see things become uh, unloosed that's been tied up and delayed. You will see those things begin to be released from the hand of the angel. Amen. So as I close this out, I want to leave you with a few more scriptures. Um, the Bible says that even the angels desire to look into this grace that God has dispensed to us. The prophets that prophesied, not even they had any idea the level of authority and power that God would give us. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, it says, which things the angels desire to look into. We are a mystery even unto the angels, okay? I'm not gonna get too deep into it. I did some teaching on it several years ago, uh, but Lucifer himself, the first angel uh, that fell from heaven, right? He fell from heaven, why? Because he wanted to be like God, right? Well, who did God make to be like him? He made us to be like him. When he created Adam, he said, let us make man and our image and our likeness, right? So we are what Lucifer wanted to be. We are like God, right? That is biblical teaching. It's not heresy. It is biblical. But anyway, um, we, are, we, are, um, we are a mystery. You know, that's why we see a lot of things happening, right? And I really feel like this year you're going to see more stuff happening in the, in the skies with, you know, UFOs or, or aerial phenomenons and, and different things, you're going to see a more manifestation of, of things happening in the heavenlies. And so you need to know your position and how to take authority and the right posture. Amen. But last few scriptures. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 2, David's last words to his son, last instructions to his son before he dies, right, was this verse here. I go the way of all the earth. I'm about to die. So he said, son, I'm about to die. I'm about to die like everyone else. Even though I'm a king, I'm about to die like everyone else. He says, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. He's saying, be a man. This is the King James Version. He said, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and be a man. Be strong. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Moses these are Moses' last words shortly towards the end of his life. His instructions is, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is, he it is that doeth, that, that doeth go with thee. It is God that goeth with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 
There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. So you have David giving instructions to Solomon. Be strong, be a man. You have Moses instructing the people to be strong in his last days, right? They say that the, the last words that a person says before they die, you know, we should really cling on to those words. We should listen to those words more closely. So you have Moses, you have King David. Now in Joshua 1, you have God himself speaking to Joshua saying, be strong. You have Timothy or you have the Apostle Paul towards the end of his ministry in 2 Timothy. Verse 2. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that Christ has given you. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. So as you enter this first day of 2023... I want to encourage you that a, a lot of things that people tell me, well, that's the area that you're strong in. And yes, I get it. Some of us have weaknesses that others don't have. Some of us have strength that others don't have. But if you can be commanded to be strong, what does that tell you? Strength is an option, right? So you might not can lift the same weight that I can lift. But whatever weight that you can lift, if you continually continually lift that weight, you will get stronger. You will be able to lift more weight, right? And so I command you to be strong. It's a choice. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the word. Be strong in the works of Christ. Be strong and on your job, be strong at school, be strong in where, whatever you do, wherever you go, be strong in the Lord, all right? Be strong in your Christian faith. And remember, God has given you authority over all spirits, demonic, human, and angelic. So it is time for us to stand up and... Uh, command some things into action. Amen. God bless. Happy 2023.